When I first saw this aircraft, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a regular World War II Navy carrier-based plane. Until I saw the tailpipe and the big T-tail. I mean, there was some kind of big exhaust pipe. On the nose was a radial engine, and the sign said the plane was a Curtis XF-15C1. It was about the same size as an A1 Skyraider, a popular prop plane from, from the aircraft carriers during the Vietnam War. But the Spad was a tail dragger, and this plane had a tricycle landing gear. I don't guess a tail wheel would have worked too well with that big exhaust pipe. Why would they build a plane with a radial engine and a jet engine too? It seems that toward the end of World War II, the Navy was very interested in carrier-based jet aircraft. However, the jet engines of 1945 had a lot of power for cruising, but were slow to accelerate. The Ryan Aeronautical Company had delivered 71 so-called mixed power aircraft, the FR-1 Fireball, to the U.S. Navy but the Navy was not pleased with the aircraft's performance. Consequently, the Navy looked to the Curtis Aeroplane and Motor Company for a replacement. Curtis designed and built the XF-15C1 Stingaree. The plane first flew July the 9th, 1945 under propeller and jet power. It had been flown in February without the jet engine. Only three were built. The first one crashed, killing the test pilot, but the others survived testing. Incidentally, the Russians had built the MiG-13 and Su-5 mixed-power aircraft as well. The XS-15C1 was powered by a Pratt & Whitney R-2800 34W double wasp 18-cylinder engine developing 2100 horsepower. This air-cooled radial engine was a version of the same engine powering the P-47 Thunderbolt. The engine turned a 13-foot Hamilton propeller. One blade was taller than the average man. The other engine was the Atlas Chalmers J-36 centrifugal flow turbojet developing 2,700 pounds of thrust. Yes, it was the company known for building tractors building jet engines under the license of the de Havilland Company of Great Britain. During the war, many companies changed from their regular product lines to build war machines. The J-36 was Ellis Chalmers' designation for the de Havilland Allbird 1B engine, the Goblin. The engine powered the first single-engine Allied jet fighter of World War II, the Vampire. One unique feature of the XS-15C1 Stingaree was the ability to start the jet engine in flight. Such actions would be predicated by a sudden need for speed, but to the tremendous consumption of fuel, the jet engine was only used with the need for speed and takeoff. From the front, the plane looked like any other propeller-driven fighter except for the air inlets for the jet engine placed near the fuselage on each wing. The engines were configured the same in the Ryan and Curtis aircraft, intake through the wing and exhaust out the rear. With a big radio up front, the pilot was practically sitting on top of the jet engine. T-tail was added to improve handling of the aircraft. Four 20 millimeter cannon took care of the armament requirements. Normally, 50 caliber machine guns would have been used. The Navy lost interest quickly after the war ended and the program for mixed power aircraft was canceled in 1946. Mixed power aircraft were to provide the evolutionary link between propeller-driven aircraft and jet aircraft, but the rapid advancement of jet engine technology eliminated 
the need for further development of mixed power engine configurations. However, the Cold War bomber, the B-36 Peacemaker, used mixed power with a combination of piston engines and jet engines. There's only one Curtis XF-15C1 Stingery surviving, and it is at the Hickory Aviation Museum in Hickory, North Carolina, a delightful small aviation museum. <laughs>